Uh, I am now recording this. Uh, okay, starting over. Hi everyone, I'm Derek. Uh, I was told to give a talk on like Rocket. What is Rocket? How does it apply to the Kubernetes team? Um, like what is Rocket Netties? Um, so this is that. Um, so here, if I share my screen. And okay, can other people see my screen? Yes. Okay. Can and yeah. I, I assume I assume people can also hear me since you answered that question. Okay. So, uh, full disclaimer: um, this is a slide deck that I'm creating for a LinuxCon thing, so it's not entirely complete. Uh, I fleshed out all the sections that are relevant to this. Um, but so, if anyone has feedback on this, um, aside from styling, because I haven't fixed that yet, um, would be welcome. But yeah. So, intro to Rocket. What is Rocket, and how do I use it? Um, so, this is the basic outline we're going to follow. Um, you know, whatever containers, what is Rocket, how do I get Rocket, and you, know, you, you can read the rest of it. Um, notably, the people in this Hangout hopefully know what containers are, so I'm going to skip the first bullet. Um, but so what is Rocket? Uh, Rocket is a piece of software that can fetch and run container images, so it's a container runtime. Um, so specifically, some of the tasks you know, it can do and is responsible for is uh, fetching container images, so it knows how to talk to registries and like if I say, hey, rocket fetch, like, quay.io slash core slash ACD, it knows how to convert um, that uh, string into, like, a resolvable, like, URL that it can go and, like, fetch, like, an actual, like, fetch files from and then have the image locally. Um, and it can also store and manage local container images. So, like, it has a local store. Um, it can, you know, have things on, on disk. And, you know, you can run things out of there instead of needing to go, go and hit the network. And you can manage them and have different versions of stuff and so on. Um, and it can also run container images, which is the part that, you know, is most notable here. Um, somewhere on that in a moment. But so Rocket follows the Unix philosophy. Um, so it's notable. It has a simple CLI interface. Um, and m more on that later, you'll see some examples of that. Um, it has well-defined operations. So Rocket is uh, first and foremost an implementation of the app C spec. So when we sat down to create Rocket, what we did first was we wrote a specification of how a container runtime should behave. And then we implemented that. So if you want to know, like, what, what variables does it, environment variables does it set in the situation, or how does it handle these other edge cases? Hopefully, all that should be defined in the specification instead of you know needing to go read the code um, or relying on us having documented it well enough. Um, there's no central privileged long-running components, so there's no like central root daemon that you know manages all the containers that you talk to to do work for you. Um, when you start a rocket process to like run your container or do some work, it happens just inside of that. A process that you've started instead of you know calling out to something else. Um, and this also ties into it has separate privileges for different operations. So for example, if you want to fetch a container image, um, in other words, you're asking some binary on your system to go out to the network and like do things and you know, interact with other people on the network, you don't need to be roots to do that, um, which you know reduces the chances of you know them finding some malicious way to talk to the rocket daemon as it's a, or rocket binary as it's trying to do stuff. Um, and then you know you can then run it as root after you've downloaded and fetched the image. Um, to do the things that it needs. So that's kind of what Rocket is. But so how do I get Rocket? So Rocket is only available on Linux. We don't have like Mac OS X builds or Windows builds or anything. Um, there's a non-zero chance we might want to support these things in the future. Um, it's not impossible with Rocket's current design. It's just not currently a priority for us. Um, it works on the AMD64 platform. And I think as of very recently, it also works on the ARM64 platform. Um, on any system that just uses glibc, you should just be able to grab a release off of GitHub. But if you want to install it properly, it's packaged in CoreOS, Debian, Fedora, Arch, Gentoo, and Nix. Um, and notably, when you install it correctly through a package, it'll set up all of the file, uh, file system permissions correctly with the right groups so that you can do uh, non-root operations uh, properly. So when I get into demonstrations later, I notably have not done this and just kind of grabbed a binary. Um, so you'll see me do, run some commands with sudo that otherwise wouldn't need to be, um, just as a you know explanation for that ahead of time. There's also a Vagrant file in the Rocket repo. So if you're a Mac user and you want to play around with it, uh, hopefully if you have Vagrant set up, it should be pretty easy to do so. Um, also, like uh, I don't, I'm not looking at the Hangout. So if anyone has like questions or you want me to like slow down or you can't understand something, just like you know say say something. Um, yeah. Okay, so on to the interesting bits. How do I use Rocket? Um, so sorry about the formatting here. I didn't have time to fix it before this. Um, so how do I use Rocket? Let's just start with a really simple example. Uh, we are going to ah. okay. We are going to just run an interactive Alpine container. So if I do sudo rocket run quit.io slash chorus. 
Uh, so rocket run alpine uh, from Quay, make it interactive, read password. Um, it uses uh, stage one uh, off the file system. I'll explain what those are in a little bit. Um, it searches for you know the string. It turns it into this URL. Um, it already has a you know the public key for this domain, so it's using that. It uh, downloads the signature. So there's a signature. There's the ACI. Verifies the image signature and then drops into container. And this you know this is Alpine. I have like the Alpine package manager and you know, like you know I assume all of you have seen something like this before. Um, so yeah, uh, rocket list will show you all of your exited and running pods. So, and again, you would not need to do this with sudo. It's just I haven't installed rocket correctly. Um, so sudo rocket list. Um, so here's our container. It has exited. It was created and started 30 seconds ago. Um, it was this image. This is the UUID of the container that was running. Um, you can also list all of your stored images with rocket image list. Um, so in here, we are going to see. Uh, Alpine, which we downloaded just a little bit ago, um, and a stage one. A again, more on what those are later. Um, you know, 50 seconds ago and 58 seconds ago, which is you know how, how long it took to you know fetch the Alp Alpine image and un un extract it. And the eight second difference there. Um, you can remove remove old containers with Rocket GC or Garbage Collect, and you can remove old images with Rocket Image GC. So, you know, if a container has exited after some amount of time, Rocket GC will just go and remove it. Rocket Image GC will just remove any images you haven't used in like X days. I forget what the exact number is. Um, and the reason why you have to do explicit cleanup instead of, for example, in Docker, you have like the tech tech RM flag to like remove a container when you're done, um, is that we have no central daemon to do this cleanup for us. Um, when everything gets set up and is running properly, it's just your application inside of some namespaces. Um, so it's hard to watch, or it's it's not trivial to you know do all this cleanup at the uh, right up front, and when we batch them all together, things can be more efficient and blah blah blah. Um, Rocket also supports Docker images. You can just refer to an image using the Docker colon slash slash prefix. Um, so just as a simple example, we can just pull Ubuntu from the Docker Hub and. Well, it's downloading to explain some of these flags I just put in. Um, so, rocket run uh, the Docker version of Ubuntu. It's going to be interactive. We're going to run bash in there, so put us in a bash shell because, if I recall, the Ubuntu image doesn't specify a default um, process to run. And I also needed to provide insecure options equals image because um, Docker does not provide GPG signatures for its images because it has a different signing model, and that's what Rocket expects. So in order for a rocket to be able to run these Docker images, you need to disable image verification. Um, yeah. So and here we are. We're just inside of Ubuntu. You have apt-get and so on. And okay, back to this. And you know, it, the image shows up like in the you know image store and everything. It's um, for all intents and purposes just a normal container image to rocket. Um, so, as a slightly more complicated example, let's run etcd and then enter the container to run etcdctl to um, just see what the, uh, you know, just, just get the cluster health to verify that etcd is running. So, I'm going to do just run, I think, I think 304 is out now. Um, yeah, and it should be all we need, just the sudo flag, or yeah, through, through sudo. Um, so, okay, search for the app. It's, okay, downloading so it, it. So, yeah, the 304 is out. And, okay, so download it, uh, verify the image signature, um, the Chorus application signing key. Um, I notably already have all of the public keys for these different images local because now I ran through all these examples beforehand. Um, so, Rocket knows all these keys to trust. Um, if this had been a domain that Rocket had never visited before, you would have seen a prompt here with a fingerprint of the key asking me to mark that this, the key is verified, um, which you can do automatically with a flag if you want, want to, you know, just always trust new keys. Um, so we have our container image running over here, uh, down here. And, okay, there's a siren, as you guys can probably hear, but, um, so if we do rocket list, um, you can see now we have one running container which is this uh, etcd image. 
Um, so if we just grab the UUID for that, we can just enter that, run etcd ctl, ask for the cluster health. Um, so this, you know, start up etcd ctl binary inside this running container, uh, passed in the cluster health arguments, and it reported that the cluster is healthy. Got a response from the lo local host port. Um, so an expected question is, wait, it's always in the foreground. Um, there is no detached flag on Rocket. There's no way to say to some central daemon, here, run this container. I don't want to see its output or have it attached to my local terminal here because there is no central daemon. What exactly would do this for you? Um, so our answer is, yeah, there's already a, syst there's already a way to manage long-running processes on your system. It's called your init system. Um, and so we want you to just use that to run your processes. And if you have run a non-interactive rocket container in the, you know, in the foreground in your shell, um, you just press control and write square bracket three times to kill it. So if we're here and do that, then it kills the container. So what if we wanted to run etcd and we wanted it to not be sitting in our terminal here? We want, this, we want to run this like, you know, in production around some server or you know, not, not literally in my you know, ZSH shell. Um, systemd provides utility for that, systemd run. And for reasons related to my system is broken, I need a net host flag here. Uh, don't worry about it. And so systemd run will talk to uh, systemd over, the, over dbus and just tell it to, hey, create a new systemd service. Um, it's going to run this command. And so here's the resulting unit that it produced. So we can you know, just use the system utilities to look at it now. So if we do systemctl status, uh, we can see that the you know, application is active, it is running. Um, here are some logs from it, here's you know, cgroup information. Um, and we can also just, uh, with this service, use like, for example, journal CTL to get logs for it. And this just uses, you know, your system's like way to manage logs and it just integrates with, uh, you know, it, it's a normal daemon on your system. It's not some special snowflake that's running under some daemon. Um, and, you know, you can also interact with your containers via machine CTL because they are, um, you know, in system D's, from system D's perspective, uh, containers. So we can also, as an example, use machine CTL to kill our containers if you wanted to. Uh, um, you could also just as easily do system CTL uh, stop. So if we get the status again, we can now see that the it, it is exited because it was forced to exit via machine CTL. And yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just did this. Okay, um, before I go on to the next thing, does anyone have any questions so far on any of this? Has everything been making sense, or am I just rambling or talking too fast? Or mm. Yeah, okay then. So charging forward. Um, how does Rocket compare to Docker? Because, um, you know, this is probably, I assume a lot of you, are, or all of you are familiar with Docker, so that's probably your number one question right now. So the biggest architectural difference, as I've been alluding to, is the process model. So in Rocket, um, it's uh, when you use Rocket, like via Kubernetes, for example, um, it just is a child of systemd. It's just another daemon that's running on your system. So you, the process model is systemd is pid1, a child of that is Rocket, and a child of that is just your, your application, whatever it may be. Um, in Docker, um, it's, a, it's a slightly different in that uh, pre-1.11, um, you had systemd, and then systemd, you know, if you want, like, at a systemd service that did docker run, for example, you'd have the docker run command, which would talk to a, um, another child of systemd, which is the docker engine that would run your application. Um, and in 1.11 plus, they also added in containerd and runc to, um, you know, kind of decouple the docker engine from the running applications. And there's also a difference here in that when you, for example, fetch images, like when you do, like, rocket fetch and something, you don't need to run it as root, provided you install it via package and the permissions are correct on your system, which mine aren't, as I mentioned earlier, which is why you saw me doing that with sudo. Um, you know, whereas when the Docker daemon runs as root and the Docker daemon always does all the work, it's a root daemon on your system that's connecting to the internet and, you know, doing work like that. So, uh, talking about spe specifications for a little bit, um, Docker works with the Docker spec. And... Rocket works with the Docker spec, the AppC spec, and the OCI spec. So the AppC spec, or the short for application container spec, is the specification that we wrote for Rocket. That's, that's the name for it, the thing that I described earlier. Um, and Rocket, right now, only understands the AppC spec. When it runs a image, it needs to be in the AppC image format, or ACI format, ACI. Um, so the way that it runs Docker images is when you do, like, uh, Rocket run, or Rocket fetch, Docker colon slash slash something, 
Um, it calls out to a project we have called Docker ACI, and it simply fetches the image from the registry or pulls it off disk or you know wherever you point it to, and it'll convert it into an ACI. You know, it will convert the manifest, squash all the root file, the root of, root of S layers together, and that and then import that. Um, we think this works fairly well. Um, you should be like using this via Iraq and Netties cluster today. Um, you know, and just pulling in Docker images passes over 90% of end-to-end -end tests, and most of the rest of that's probably due to flakiness on the Rocket to Kubernetes integration, not due to the like Docker to ACI conversion. Um, however, now we've all gotten together and agreed on this new glorified spec called the OCI spec. You know, where everyone's going to use the same spec, everything will be great, everything will work well together, and not you know have all these different specs that everything's supposed to support. Um, so Rocket recently gained support for the OCI image spec also. However, it's going through this conversion process uh, the, sa the same way. Um, for, for now, we think that'll, uh, we wanted to have that in place for when registries start to become OCI compatible, so Rocket will just work with them. Um, however, we are working on adding like native OCI support where we don't need to go through this conversion process. We can just store OCI images and we can just run them. Um, and that, that's uh, currently a work in progress. Um, also Rocket, uh, one of the bigger, another big architectural difference is that it was designed with pods in mind. Um, when you run an image, like what I did just did with etcd, you're actually running a pod just with one app. And you can also specify to Rocket pod manifests. You can write a, a blob of JSON saying you have all these different images, I need them, them to all run these different things, and they're all going to run in the same like shared like isolation context. So like, you know, if we're using the default stage one, they'll all run in the same like PID namespace, and, you know, so on. Um, one of, this is different than how Kubernetes models pods uh, in at least one aspect, which is that in Rocket, you cannot do container level restarts. You only do pod level restarts. So if one of the containers inside of a pod dies or needs to be restarted, the entire pod gets you know, shut down and garbage collected, and then another one gets start, started up. And this is something that we are currently changing uh, to more closely model how Kubernetes works. So if, for those of you th to which the phrase like container runtime interface means anything, um, you know, that's, that's our solution to that. Over, you know, we're coming up with an interface for Kubernetes to be able to go in and be like, no, I need to restart this one container inside of here. And yeah. OK, so going a little more into like how the like, internals of Rocket works. Um, so when you run a pod with Rocket, there are three stages to this. So first off, the stage 0 is the Rocket binary on your system. It's a Golang binary. It's called Rocket. It's in your path. Um, it's responsible for like fetching images, verifying images, managing the image store, you know, performing like garbage collection. Um, it also like manages overlay FS mounts and some other things like related to that. When it comes time to start your application, the stage zero is not actually what sets up any of like the isolation or starts your application at all. What it starts is a different component, an entirely different uh, binary inside of its own like little um, environment is the stage one. And the stage one is responsible for setting up the isolation. So by default, this uses you know Linux namespaces. It sets up your PID namespace, your network namespace, your mount namespace, and so on. It you know can manage it, and inside these namespaces, it can manage the application mounts. Um, so you can, like find mount and you know the resources that you need. Um, it can manage the networks. You know add whatever interfaces or like addresses that you need and starts the application hypervisor. And the application hypervisor in the default case is systemd, which will then go and start up your app. So uh, another difference from Rocket to, to Docker, which I didn't mention earlier, and should probably add to these slides, is that Rocket runs systemd inside your container. Um, so if I go back to our Alpine command, uh, any second now, and I look at the processes inside of here, you can see that we do have, you know, PID1 is systemd here. It's not the binsh command that we started. Um, yeah. And this stage one is a pluggable component. You can swap them out, you can rewrite them, and as long as it does the things of, you can start your application inside of some you know, isolation context, um, it's fine. And that context does not need to be Linux namespaces. So th the stage ones that you know, we have within Rock that we provide, um, the first two are core OS and host. They're both similar, just imp different implementations of the same thing. You start up PID namespaces and you know, network namespace, li Linux namespaces, runs systemd inside of that, and that starts your application. We also have a fly stage one, and the fly stage one notably only uses a true syscall. It does not set up any namespaces at all. Um, so if you have an application you want to run, like the kubelet, for example, that needs to manage mounts, um, you know, needs to manage like, like network interfaces like on, on your host, you can use the fly stage one to you know, provide a consistent way to ship your application. It'll run in the same environment but it'll be able to see and inter interact with everything on the host from the you know, perspective of like mounts and like pit and like other processes and so on. Um, 
we can also go the other direction of let's add in more isolation. And so we have a KVM stage one. And how this works is it starts up a KVM process with an entirely new like Linux VM. And inside of there is running systemd and then your application. Um, and you know it, it uses the root of fest that would have come from the container. It sets up, you know, networks the same way you'd expect, sets up mounts the same way you'd expect. Um, and this is just, you know, so effectively we have the style and we by default it just uses the Linux namespaces and you can spin it like away from uh, isolation towards fly or like towards isolation with KVM. Um, it's this you know, interesting knob that we, you know, you can move back and forth. And in Rackinetti's today, um, inside of a pod that you're writing, you can just add an annotation stating which of these stage ones you want to use. So in a Rackinetti's cluster, you could be like, I have these applications here I don't trust. Um, and I want to run them inside VMs because, you know, I, I more trust the like older and more battle tested, you know, VM, you know, isolation mount model. Uh, let's run this application inside of VMs, inside of Kubernetes. And it's just like an annotation you add onto your pod, and that's the only work you need to do, provided you have a Rocket Nineties cluster. And okay, so for the last section, uh, how does Rocket Nineties work? Um, so someone other than me came up with this pretty little graph, which I stole. Um, and so this is a typical worker node inside of your Kubernetes cluster. So you have the kubelet that's running; it's talking to the API server, and it you know knows how to you know knows what needs to run and so on. And whenever it wants to like ask Rocket what are the current containers that are running, what's the status of things, what has exited. Um, we have a read-only Rocket API service. Um, and when we, we say read-only, this means you cannot do any like operations that affect state. You can't like ask it to like start containers, for example. Um, and it uses gRPC to talk to this Rocket API service, which can inspect the things on the host. And the reason this API service exists is so we have like a versioned API that Kubla can use to like figure these things out without needing to like muck around just directly like executing Rocket and like parsing the output and like that would be awful. Um, and the kubelet um, also will use uh, dbus to talk to just systemd on the host to start up the rocket processes. So instead of talking to like the docker daemon to start to manage processes for it, um, it just you know constructs the rocket command that will run the container and passes it off to systemd to manage the processes. Um, so, so you know the, the init system. And yeah, that's the end of the slides that I have. I thought that would take longer. Um, so if people have questions now or like anything you want to know about Rocket or any other demonstrations you want, um, be happy to uh, provide. Hi, uh, Eric Ramson speaking. I have a question regarding the KVM uh, mode. Does that mean that you then launch a kernel? Is it like a VM or is it? Yeah, there's a separate like Linux kernel running inside the VM. OK, thank you. There's options to support both LKVM and KMU as your uh, hyper as as your uh, virtual machine runtime. And I believe Pavel can talk more about that if you're interested in more details. Uh, currently, uh, uh, on official uh, GitHub available is only LKVM, but we have. Uh, existing C group. For example, if I did systemd run slice something, would that work? Uh, yeah, so Rocket will just run, uh, as stated by my colleague here, uh, in the uh, C group, uh, here, you can say it. Yeah, but one other interesting thing about Rocket is that, again, like other Unix processes, it will just nest below your current shell. So if you are running in a state where you already have some C group limits applied to you, and you just run a new rocket container, it will inherit them, it will work. If you use systemd run, you provide a slice, or you run it from a unit, provide a slice, it will nest under that correctly. Docker does have the C group parent flag, but it doesn't uh, as naturally integrate with other processes that you might run. It also doesn't integrate as well with init systems, any other init system, systemd, upstart, whatever, that wants to manage C groups. Rocket will naturally inherit from and be able to use without even having to know much about them. Uh, also, side note that just occurred to me because this comes up periodically and I forgot to mention it. There is no requirement to, for you to have systemd on your host to use Rocket. 
Um, Rocket will ship System D itself inside of a stage one, but you can like use have a system that uses like Upstart or OpenRC and just you know use the, that to you know, like also run Rocket. It does have a couple slight integrations with System D, such as the System D notify support that lets the application opt into letting the system know when the application is running, rather than the runtime just saying, "I exec state the init process; it's probably running." Um, but that's not required. That's just an optional integration if you do happen to be running System D on the host. However, for the Rocket Dendy's integration right now, System D is required for for running it under Kubernetes. So that is not a hard requirement forever. Okay, any other questions or things people just want to know about Rocket or Rocket Netties in general? Hey Derek, could, uh, could, could you and or Ewan possibly comment on uh, on changes between 1.3 and the upcoming 1.4 release in the Rocket Netties bit? Uh, I cannot, but I'm sure you can. Yep, yeah, sure. Um, so we're we're having some progress on some of the sort of known issues we have. If you look at the upstream Kubernetes documentation for the Rocket runtime, you can see a small set of known issues. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll come back to the, your question about the container in a second, but let me finish this real quick. Um, some of those known issues include things like lifecycle management being slightly different because Rocket controls the concept of the pod right now entirely, and also some slight networking differences between different stage ones and uh, between how some parts of uh, CI and Rocket work and so on. Um, we are working right now to make it so that Rocket allows application level operations which will allow us to support some features that Kubernetes wants to implement that require it to control the pod more closely. Specific features to name here are things like pre-stop and, uh, sorry, post-stop and pre-start hooks working more naturally. Right now they work in Rocket, but they work less reliably than under Docker. Um, things like init containers, things like single containers restarting within an application without the entire pod restarting, and things like mutating your application to update a uh, application's image while your pod is already running. All those right now are accomplished in Rocket via either not working at all in the case of init containers or via restarting the whole pod. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sure if the CRI integration will actually end up making the 1.4 release. We are hopeful that a good chunk of it will, but if it does, it will also quite possibly still be experimental. Um, other things that we have for this release is continued basically stabilization of the existing features and improvement of how the privileged mode works right now. Right now, when you set a privileged, the privilege flag in your pod, it behaves slightly different than Docker because um, Rocket security features were at a slightly different granul granularity and also a little uh, more difficult to turn off in one case. So we're making the semantics there a little better. Um, I think that's the highlights I want to call out now. We're going to continue to work on just making everything smoother, stable, or making the stage one with KVM work more naturally as much as possible. Though I, I would like to thank Pavel for his help there, too. Shout out to him. Um, but yeah, I think that's my answer for that. If cool. anyone has further questions, feel free. Um, thank you. I also saw, what was this? Yeah, I can pull it up. Yeah, pull up this question again. So we don't need the infra container because the infra container for the Docker runtime is used as essentially a placeholder for namespaces and to have a process to attach your network namespace and so on to. In the Rocket runtime, we currently create the network namespace outside of Rocket itself, and that is held by a file, the uh, var run net and s file, which is a basically Linux semi-standard thing. And similarly, our, um, our namespaces other than network are all held by the systemd PID1 within the pod. Because Rocket has an existing cohesive idea of a pod, has an existing PID1 that can hold all of the other namespaces, such as mount namespace, and hold a C group and be available 
as, as a long-running thing, we don't have a need for the infra container. We don't expect to have a need for the infra container even after we have application level operations either because we will continue to have a first class pod concept and just have application concepts at a granularity under the pod as well. It, it's basically just we designed in a way where we can run multiple applications together and since Docker did not, you end up happily having the infra container to merge multiple applications and have a single uh, container that they can kind of use as a point of synchronization for all their namespaces and so on. Hopefully that answered your question. If not, I'd be happy to elaborate. Yeah. I've yeah, we have a file in the core, core Rocket documentation and like uh, comparing just Rocket to other projects. We should probably point that out in, in there. Yeah, I don't believe we have any document in Kubernetes specifically talking about that design difference, but that would probably be a good thing to have at some point. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or just things people want to hear about? I was wondering, well, I'm sorry, I was wondering what uh, requirements you have for uh, a I mean, Docker, Apple Docker Registry, the rocket images with something like a basic server website. You broke up a bit, mind repeating? Uh, okay, sorry. I was just asking to serve rocket images, do you need a special kind of registry, like the Docker registry is for Docker, or can you just use a basic web server? Yeah, so um, right now, uh, if you want to like host your own rocket images and like uh, serve them up, uh, you can. Uh, you can just use a base, like anything that can host static files can do this. Um, you, you can just use an Nginx process to just host your like rocket images and like have the nice like discovery features. Um, it will require you to like write a little bit of HTML by hand and like name your files following a template you want to come up with. Um, but it's not too hard to do. I did this myself for a while. Um, there are notably no registries online right now that like you like will host rocket images for you. Um, so you need to like have your own place to put them. Um, there is an interesting thing in Quay though, in that uh, Quay only hosts uh, Docker containers. But if you attempt to pull a rocket image from it, it'll on the fly convert it, the Docker image into a rocket image, sign it, and then hand it to you. Um, I'll, I'll add that I personally host my rocket app container images, ACIs, on S3, and I haven't had any trouble doing that. I just, the only gotcha is to make sure the content type is correct for the HTML page. And I will also point out that any existing Docker registry can be pulled from by Rocket, as we said earlier. Yeah, just static web servers work great, and S3 works great for me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, if you want more information on that, actually, um, I'm currently in the process of making a, a series of screencasts for Rocket just for the month of August. It's just something Chorus Marketing Team asked me to do. And the next one will actually be talking about that, um, just if that's of interest. Will you be able to find that on the CoreOS blog? Yeah, it'll be on the CoreOS blog. Cool. Have any questions? I'm happy to reclaim time if no one does. Okay, well, thanks everyone for listening. Um, if you want to talk more or have questions or whatever, uh, you can find us all via email, and we're also on Freenode on Pound Core S, Pound Rocket, and Pound Rocket Dev. And also on the Kubernetes Slack in, say, Rocket Netties. And our meetings in the future weeks will be at this time as well, so only half an hour, and we'll talk about more regular development stuff. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you.